Okay, uh, welcome everybody. It's nice to see so many of you here um, for our second um, event, which is part of our Sadler Seminar series, Curating and Exhibiting Visual, visual Culture in Times of Coronavirus. Um, and I'm absolutely delighted to be able to welcome a very special guest today, Janaín Oliveira, um, who is currently in Brazil. Actually, Janaína, I didn't ask you where you are. I, I assume you're in Brazil. Yeah. Yes, I am. I am in Rio now. Yes. <laughs> And uh, so Janaina um, is um, a curator, um, a film curator, very experienced. She's also a film programmer. She's an academic um, and she um, not only curates uh, Brazilian film, but is, has also been involved in a number of um, initiatives beyond Brazil, um, including the Flaherty Seminar, most recently, I think, um, uh, in the States, and has also was also involved in a very important um, retrospective of Black Brazilian um, film that took place in the Rotterdam, I think it was, Rotterdam Film Festival. Rotterdam. Yeah, yeah, Rotterdam. Of, yeah yes, last year. Last year, okay. No, 2019. Sorry, I'm, you know. Right, yeah, we're 2021 now. Yeah, so a couple yeah. of years, a couple of years ago. So Shalaina yeah. then is particularly well placed, I think, to be able to speak to um, some of the concerns that, that that we have as part of this Sadler seminar series, which is this idea of the possibilities uh, um, that perhaps emerge at, at, in times of you know difficulty, thinking about the current pandemic opportunities, but also, I guess, the, the, the impact, the more negative impact that this might have on democratization, I guess, of access to culture. Um, so it's part of these, these broader discussions that we've been having. Um, and I also wanted to introduce very quickly, um, so we've got um, Raquel de Souza, our wonderful interpreter, I've introduced already, and Gilberto Alexandre Sobrinho, who'll be acting as, um, I guess, a kind of discussant for us. Um, Gilberto is an academic, um, he's a professor of film studies at um, Unicampi University in, in Brazil. And he's also uh, an experienced filmmaker um, and also, importantly, a curator. And he was involved in, um, he is involved in curating um, feature films, Brazilian feature films as part of the Victoria Film Festival. I got that right, Gilberto, didn't I? Yeah. So again, very well placed to be able to, um, you know, sort of uh, add to these discussions. So without further ado, then, I'm going to hand over to Janaina. Um, and I think you've got some slides to show us as well for part of your yes, talk. I do. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Um, então, so, obrigada. É, uh, eu posso fazer os agradecimentos? Vou, vou como fazer tudo em português, senão eu vou ficar confusa. Uh, Não, minha é... querida, pode fazer os agradecimentos em, em inglês, se quiser. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll do the, you know, just the introduction in English, and then when I start talking, I'll do it in Portuguese. I, do, I just want to thank um, Stephanie, Alice, Alice, sorry, I was port doing Alice in Portuguese, <laughs> um, and Gilberto, Raquel, and everybody involved um, in putting this together. It's a um, real pleasure and an honor to be here with you today, and it's also good to see, you know, people that I know from other places, Inês, Cristina, nice to have you here too. And um, so, so I'll do it in, uh, I had this uh, brief presentation, just, I'm gonna just put some ideas, Hakel is gonna help me uh, translating it. And then, um, yeah, and then we can follow up the discussion and Roberto, feel free to intervene whenever you feel like to. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna share my screen and then we start. Então, eu vou começar. É, cê, uh, vocês estão vendo? Are you... Did you... Can't, ok. Um, então, o nome dessa, da minha fala hoje, ela tem a ver com uh, um projeto que eu venho desenvolvendo nos últimos dois anos, que é uma reflexão mais sistemática sobre curadoria em cinema. Então, esse é o título, A Política so, do Olhar, Diálogo sobre Curadoria so, e Descolonização. Title of my presentation: The Gay Politics, Dialogues on Curatorship and Decolonization, and this is a part of a project that I have been developing in the last couple of years. Durante é, o encontro de cinema negros hoje em Bubu, mas com uma reflexão mais ampla sobre é, curadoria de um modo geral. Eu vou falar disso mais adiante. É, e nessa tela inicial a gente tem 
frames de filmes uh, que fazem parte né, da história do cinema negro, como Alma no Olho, mas também outros frames né, de, de filmes mais contemporâneos. É no centro que está o Alma no Olho dos Oscar. Part of a project that is focused on the festival Black Film Zosimububu Black, Black Film Festival, and is also part of a larger project that I have been developing on curatorship. And what you see at the center is a snapshot of the film uh, Alma no Olho. How was it translated to English? Soul in the Eye? Soul in the Eye, literally. Alma no Olho, Soul in the Eye. It's the, the center. Um, bom, então eu vou dar sequência. Então, só para. É, eu acho importante né, é, situar a, a história dos. A, quem é o Zózimo, e é isso que o slide está dizendo, a gente não precisa traduzir, mas o Zózimo ele é considerado, digamos assim, é, o. o, o precursor, o pioneiro do cinema negro no Brasil, não por ter sido o primeiro cineasta negro, mas por conta desse filme Alma no Olho, né, que é, enfim, eu considero, né, o gesto inaugural do cinema negro no Brasil. So, uh, though he was not the black, the first black filmmaker in Brazil, he is considered a precursor and the founder of black uh, cinema in Brazil. In light of this particular production, Soul in the Eye, that was released in 1973, his name again is Zosimo Bobo. E, e o que é, na verdade, também não importante trazer aqui né, para essa conversa é só não o fato dele ser esse cineasta, mas também ser uma pessoa fundamental para a criação e consolidação desse campo do cinema negro do Brasil, sobretudo através da iniciativa da criação do Encontro de Cinema Negro Brasil, África e Caribe, é, encontro que depois que ele morreu, passou a se tomar, se é, em 2003, passou a chamar Encontro de Cinema Negro Brasil, a África e Caribe, a, é, Zózimo, Encontro do Cinema Negro, Zózimo, Bubu, Brasil, África, Caribe e outras diásporas, né? Como... So, what we should emphasize here is that um, he is considered the father of black cinema in Brazil in light of the fact that not only did he um, produce that film, but also he organized the first black cinema festival in Brazil, and after his passing, the black cinema Cinema Festival became uh, the Black Gathering, named after him, Zosimo Bubu, Brazil, Africa, Caribbean, and other diaspora. E um, é importante para mim trazer logo de início é, a figura do Zos, não só por conta da relevância dele né, para a história do cinema negro, para a história do cinema brasileiro, é, mas porque isso tem a ver com a minha trajetória como pesquisadora e depois, posteriormente, como curadora. So not only is it important for me to bring him first and foremost in my presentation, Uh, because of his relevance in black film production in Brazil, but also because of my own personal and professional trajectory. É, a, a minha entrada, eu não sou, eu não sou formada em cinema, não tenho uma formação é, estrito senso em cinema, tenho uma formação em história. É, a minha relação com o cinema, ela vem depois do meu doutorado e vem é, nesse desejo, na verdade, uma grande insatisfação com a é, invisibilidade das produções é, é, diaspóricas e africanas, sejam brasileiras ou de outras diásporas, é, e, sobretudo, com a invisibilidade do trabalho dos Osmo, né, que começa o encontro de cinema negro aos 70 anos. So, um, I do not have a formal training in cinema. I actually started working with black cinema after finishing my PhD training in history. And one of my concerns is that not only uh, the work produced by black filmmakers is it, the invisibility of the size of movies in Brazil, but also the invisibility of Zosimo Mububu's work uh, have uh, awakened my interest in looking and studying and researching black film in Brazil and the black diaspora. 
Ah, e eu também começo a, a minha conversa sobre curadoria, a, enfim, programação de cinemas e cinema negro, enfim, cinematografias africanas pelos Osimo, é, porque está relacionada à forma pela qual eu compreendo que seja é, esse lugar da curadoria e a atividade é, do curador. So I also start by Zosimo Bubu's work because it shed lights on my own understanding of black cinema and black curatorship and my work, the project that I develop. É, a gente sabe que essa discussão sobre curadoria em cinema é uma discussão relativamente recente, não só no Brasil, mas no mundo como um todo. É, existem várias é, articulações e possibilidades de compreender é, a ideia de curadoria em si. Ah, muito tradicionalmente, quando as pessoas começam a falar, elas falam da curadoria relacionada aos processos de cura, é, né, por conta da, da, da relação é, etimológica. So, um, not all this, we are aware of the fact that this debate in, about around black curatorship is brand curatorship new. Curatorship in general, sorry. The curatorship in general, good, is, is <laughs> somewhat new, not only in Brazil, but in the world. And uh, this debate being recent, the role of thinking, thinking about black curatorship is something that has awakened my interest and something that I am uh, developing a project at the moment. Just adding something, Raquel, sorry. And that the idea in general that when we speak about curatorship has to do with healing. So people usually mm -hmm. connect us because you know the etymological uh, origin of uh, the word back to portuguese and um, but i'm speaking yeah, and also so, i'm speaking about creating in cinema that's what i was starting at first so cura and healing yes thank you e aí uh, mas historicamente também para pessoas né para os grupos não hegemônicos ou seja para pessoas não brancas não homens não cisgênero é Curado, os processos curatoriais muito mais significam, os curatoriais de cinema muito mais representam traumas do que cura. So for, however, uh, it's important to highlight that for non-hegemonic heterosexual groups, the work of curatorship is not related to healing, but rather it is related to trauma. E, é, no sentido que, na verdade, o cinema de uma forma hegemônica, estou pensando nos festivais, nas mostras e na circulação de filmes, é, durante muito tempo é, a, excluíram, digamos assim, ou não consideraram outras produções, é, e ainda continuam, ainda não, às vezes, não considerando... É, produções não hegemônicas, eu não gosto de falar produções periféricas, é, a, né, é, como, como dignas de, de, de avaliação ou valor ou enfim, mérito cinematográfico. So, and when we are talking about mainstream festivals, film festivals, and the process of a hegemonic curatorship does not consider the work that is produced by non-hegemonic groups. I don't like to use the terminology peripheral groups, so I'd rather use the term non-hegemonic groups. And the work produced by these uh, non-hegemonic groups is usually not considered worthy of consideration and evaluation for this mainstream uh, film festival. Isso porque também, de um ponto de vista histórico, os processos curatoriais eles estão relacionados ou eles são um, afiliados né, a um gesto de uma cinefilia é, tradicional. Because usually in this uh, context, uh, these uh, festivals are considering uh, the public and an audience that is very traditional. Cinefilia tradicional, uh, it's an important word. Uh, traditional cinefilia, that's what I'm trying to say also. Traditional cinefilia. Yes. 
Ah, então, nesse sentido, é, o que a compreensão que eu tenho, e por isso eu começo com, com, a, com a relação com os Osimo, é, que os processos curatoriais, na verdade, é, o lugar da curadoria, primeiro, é um lugar é, de poder e é um lugar político de poder, é, e que, por isso, é, eu prefiro né, pensar a cinefilia muito mais atrelada à ideia de zelo, aí Raquel quer, do que a propriamente é, é, do que a ideia de cura, é, como né, eu havia mencionado inicialmente. Então, so, um, in in this sense, é, this is another reason why I start with uh, the work developed by Zosimo Bubu. It's because a black a uh, film or film production has to do with uh, spaces of power and political power. And in that sense, rather than using the term um, um, a curatorship or cure or healing, I'd rather think about the word in Portuguese, velo or care. Just a brief remark, Raquel. I was talking specifically about curating, not black films uh, as... Exactly. Oh, the process of curating as a whole. Okay. Okay, that's it. Um, então, nesse sentido, a conexão né, com a minha história e a trajetória dos Osmo é porque compreendendo a curadoria como cuidado, como zelo, como cuidar de é, uh -huh. alguma coisa... É, a curadoria, para mim, é um gesto de intervenção. É assim que eu compreendo os processos curatoriais. So, curatorship, for me, has to do with caring, looking after a particular set of, of work. And in that sense, that's my understanding of curatorship. Curatorship is the work of looking after a particular set of, 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 of film production. And an intervention gesture. And, and a gesture of intervention, first and foremost. Uh, então, uh, nesse sentido, a primeira coisa né, que se desfaz é assim, né, essa relação tradicionalmente colocada de uma oposição entre política é, e estética. É, né, porque isso estaria associado a essa, a essa digamos assim, uma perspectiva para citar né, o Guiris Chambu. Uh, de uma velha cinefilia. So then, uh, the first aspect that I would like to emphasize in that sense is uh, that we are talking about politics and aesthetics. And uh, what is the name of the author? Sorry, that you. Girish Shambu. Girish Shambu. Shambu. Yes. Shambu. Ele escreveu okay. um manifesto que se chama. Uh, uh, para uma nova cinefilia. Está publicado he na wrote, revista Filma Quarterly. He wrote a manifesto called uh, For a New or in Promotion of a New for Cinefilia. A new, for a New Cinefilia. And it's on uh, last 2019 winter, I think, or spring uh, from Filma Quarterly. Bom, então, é, e aí, né? É, nesse sentido, então, para resumir o que talvez eu esteja querendo dizer, que é, nesses gestos de intervenção, os processos curatoriais eles são, funcionam também como uma oferta, offering, é, né? como um gesto de você... E aí eu vou citar a Colleen Smith, que é uma artista estadunidense numa, numa, num programa né, feito pelo Greg DeCue Jr. ano passado para o uh, Media, Film, Media City Film Festival, um programa que chamava Radical Acts of Care, onde a Colleen fala né, que dessa, desse gesto dela, de como ela pensa o seu próprio trabalho, eu estou trazendo isso para minha, a minha perspectiva de falar da curadoria como um gesto de intervenção, né, que é pensar a curadoria, então, também como uma oferta, onde, literalmente, você pega o que você quiser. So, and uh, in this sense, when I am talking about curatorship processes, I utilize the work and the concept developed by Colleen Smith when she talks about um, a curatorship as Her a gesture of interest. Ela está falando huh? dos seus próprios... Ela é cineasta, ela está falando dos seus trabalhos. Não, não é eu que estou trazendo a curadoria. É. Uh -huh. 
So she is a filmmaker, and Janaina is bringing to her own work this uh, concept of um, curatorship as a gesture of, of intervention, as an offer offering. in which, in an, an offering in which you you take uh, whatever you, you it's suitable for you. Uh, então, assim, essas são algumas coisas que estão presentes nas, na, nas reflexões que eu tenho sobre curadoria, mas, sobretudo, eu penso também que é necessário é, um, algo que eu sempre falo, duas coisas, né? um deslocamento epistemológico, mobilizar outras ferramentas epistemológicas é, para pensar é, é, as cinematografias, mas é preciso também presença. Não é só uma, um deslocamento que se dá num campo teórico, mas é também, digamos assim, um deslocamento físico, no sentido que as pessoas precisam estar, outras pessoas precisam estar é, nesse lugar é, da curadoria. So curatorship, therefore, I, uh, seems to be, for me, um, the utilization of epistemological tools in such a way that there is mobility, there is a shift in terms of uh, how to consider, to conceptualize filmmaking in such a way that not only is it about production, but it is about having other bodies occupying these spaces of curatorship. So it's also about presence. This is an important and it's word. A, therefore, it is, it is about presence. Um, na semana passada, eu estava assistindo um webinar com o Fred Molden e o Stefan Harvey, Harney, aqui, né, uh, que aconteceu, promovido pela uma universidade aqui no Brasil, e em algum momento eles, alguém perguntou como ou por que eles faziam o que eles estavam fazendo, essa produção é, juntas, né, juntos, e, e a resposta é, tinha a ver com o que eles chamaram de certo sentido de convivialidade, mas que basicamente se relaciona a essa ideia de desfazer é, a individuação, a autoria, a propriedade, é, uhum. essa propriedade a priori tal né, que, que, nos, que nos é imposta. E eu acho que isso, em certo sentido, é, também permeia e atravessa é, o meu horizonte quando eu penso é, em programar filmes ou escolher filmes. So last week I was watching a seminar, a webinar that was organized here in Brazil, uh, featuring Fred Molding and Stephen Harvey. And uh, they were asked a question about why they, they were doing this work together. And their answer resonates with my own approach to curatorship, which is to uh, break apart or undo this notion of property Uh, an individualism that is imposed upon us, and uh, this authorship. notion, this, and this notion of authorship, is something that I also would like to break apart from. That I believe uh, permeates my own approach to curatorship. Um, bom, então, assim, estou colocando algumas questões, uh, é, mas eu poderia explorar diversas iniciativas que eu já tive em termos de curadoria, como essa do Ficine ou essa outra, enfim, parceria com outros festivais e mostras fora do Brasil, é, programando experiências diversas, ou mesmo a experiência em Roterdã, So in my own work, I would like to mention some initiatives of partnerships that I have established with international film festivals and uh, national film festivals as well. And I could also mention the experience I had with the Rotterdam Festival. A ideia é que eu poderia explorar essas curadorias para falar disso que eu estou falando, mas eu vou focar rapidamente para encerrar na experiência dos Osmo Bubu, mais especificamente na experiência online do ano passado, para dialogar com a proposta é, do, do seminário um, aqui. Né? So instead of using my own experiences in, in establishing these types of uh, partnerships that break up with the notion of individualism and authorship, I am going to talk about my experiences in programming and curating 
uh, in the context of the Sosimobubu Black Festival, particularly Black Film Festival, particularly the experience we had organizing the online uh, festival last year in 2020. Então, esse é um, é, um, é um, um encontro, ele é muito particular, é um festival, uma mostra muito particular, que dialoga historicamente é, com a, a ideia que tem essa janela de exibição para as cinematografias negras e africanas. Então, tem um, 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 endereço, tem um, um digamos assim, um recorte e um endereçamento, um público é, né, é, alvo muito específico, que são as pessoas negras. So then, this is a particularly um, peculiar, if you will, type of a black film festival that takes place in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, in which the target audience are black uh, people. E, bom, e aí eu trabalho como curadora do encontro desde 2017 e... A, a pergunta, então, como essa ideia né, desse, de perceber então, a curadoria como um gesto, como uma intervenção, como um gesto de intervenção, mas como uma oferta, como, é, que é, como acontece esse diálogo especificamente na minha prática curatorial do encontro? So then, uh, the notion, in, uh, I've been working as a curator for this festival since 2017, And uh, I would like to interrogate here uh, how has my own process of curating for this festival, uh, how it has been developed over these years. Então, há um diálogo com a, com a proposta de curadoria do Zózimo Bubu, que é essa ideia de ter um panorama, o um encontro ser um lugar de acolhimento das produções é, é, negras e africanas. So, Oh, and then I am investigating uh, my dialogue, the dialogue that I have established with the Zosimo Bubu and how he proposed to create this uh, film festival in order to welcome uh, black filmmakers and productions from different parts of the world. So this dialogue between the, his proposition and the And, e o que eu estou pensando, né? porque o encontro ele tem uma estrutura dos filmes, mas tem uma parte, digamos assim, de formação e mais recentemente também tem uma parte relacionada ao mercado. Né? Então, como a proposta curatorial, ela dialoga com esses, esses, esses digamos assim, esses, esses espaços dentro né? é, do, do festival. So then... Uh, not only is this film uh, housing black film production from different parts of the African diaspora, but uh, it has incorporating an aspect of an or space for providing training to filmmakers and curators. And more recently, we have also incorporated a space uh, to debate uh, issues regarding the market. So I'm trying to, so how does curatorship navigate within uh, these different aspects of the festival. Então, eu não vou aqui, né, não tenho tempo para me alongar, mas por exemplo, nesse nesse slide que a gente está vendo, é, são imagens do encontro de 2018 e eu acho que eles condensam um pouco essa dimensão de intervenção, dessa compreensão que dialoga com formação, mas obviamente também com os filmes e um diálogo com a audiência, a audiência no sentido amplo, não só os espectadores dos filmes, mas também as pessoas que estão trabalhando, cineastas, roteiristas, atores e atrizes no campo do cinema negro no Brasil, que esse também é um público-alvo é, das produções. Então, por exemplo, nesses slides, so, a gente... Ok. So, in these slides, I think I have chosen these slides um, uh, for, uh, that came from the festival, uh, the activities that were featured in the 2018 edition of this Black Film Festival, that not only uh, was it geared towards uh, the audience, uh, the regular audiences, but also to Black filmmakers and to curators and other people who are part of the film or Black film industry. Então, por exemplo, tem uma parte relacionada à própria história do cinema negro, 
com a homenagem que sempre acontece, sempre tem alguém ou algum evento que é homenageado, nesse ano o homenageado foi o Haile Gerima. So not only do we feature films and work in these workshops, but we also dedicate a space uh, to talk about the history of black film, and we usually choose uh, someone to be honored during the festival. And in 2018, we honored uh, the black filmmaker Holly Garima. Uh, mas também, por exemplo, a gente teve, a, começou uma outra sessão especial, uma sessão dedicada, por exemplo, ao cinema experimental negro, e a gente convidou o Christopher Harris. E essas são sessões que se tornam, são fixas no, no encontro, né? Isso que eu estou querendo destacar, né? Desse diálogo entre é, o gesto da curadoria de pensar os filmes, mas também o campo do cinema de uma forma mais ampla. Então, a gente tem essa sessão com o Christopher Harris, de Cinema Negro Experimental, que no ano seguinte foi com o Kevin Jerome Everson, e esse ano foi com o Terence Nance, uh, mas também o diálogo sobre crítica de cinema, é, de crítica de cinema no campo do cinema negro, do cinema africano, e a gente teve a Claire Diao é, também como convidada num debate sobre crítica. Então, então Raquel? <risos> então... Not only do we have all of these different sections uh, for in this Black Film Festival, but we have also dedicated a particular section for uh, discussing, debating um, experimental film. An exhibiting. So in in, uh, sorry. Mostrar também, não, só, não é só discussão, tem a mostra, né? a debate on experimental film, but we also had exhibitions of um, exper black experimental films, and we invited uh, film directors in this expertise, in this area of expertise of experimental film. In 2018, we invited uh, Christopher Harris, and last year, I can't remember his name, Janine, I'm, I'm Kevin sorry. Jerome Everson. Kevin Jerome Everson. And um, we invited Chris Nance also to talk about Black experimental film and exhibit his work at the festival. And also we have this, uh, this uh, film critic, uh, Claire Diao, from uh, Awatale magazine, and she's also worked for the uh, Cannes Film Festival at Kinzen. So, uh, so we are working in this like tripod. We have the films, but also we have a discussion on black experimental films and also film criticism. E, por fim, ano, em 2019, eu, a gente começou um diálogo sobre curadoria e descolonização com a presença de curadores internacionais e nacionais. So, in 2018, we also added a section in film exhibits on curatorship and decoloniality, and we had, we had, we invited wow. international makers to participate in this debate and exhibit their work. E aqui tem algumas dessas pessoas que participaram em, um, em 2019, é a primeira edição do Políticas uh, do Olhar, e aí a gente tem a segunda edição, que foi esse ano, em 2020, também com a presença de uh, curadores uh, internacionais. E aí eu vou passar aqui rápido, só para enfim, para vocês so, verem. Great coloniality was first featured in 2019, and in 2020 we had its second, second edition, and these are some of the filmmakers that we invited to talk about this issue, Sorry, not only uh, film. They are not filmmakers, they are programmers, curators. Yes, pro critics, yes. Yes. Film, yes. Porque essa é o, esse é o Políticas do Olhar. O Políticas do Olhar, que dá nome a essa apresentação, na verdade, começa com essa, esse debate sobre curadoria e descolonização, com a presença, e presença é uma palavra importante, porque é disso que, né, que eu acabei de falar anteriormente, com a presença de outros curadores, né? porque eu acho que o gesto de descolonizar o lugar da curadoria passa 
por, esse, por tipo de interação que a gente está tendo aqui, que é por troca de experiência, porque é preciso desmistificar esse processo em última instância do que são as práticas curatoriais. So, uh, the gay politics then has to do is directly linked to that concept that I had raised before, which is presence, and it has to do exactly with what we are doing at the moment here, which is to have this presence in order to demystify uh, the work of, of, of curatorship in black cinema and cinema in general. Então, para encerrar, é, e aí eu vou relacionar com a proposta do webinar, dessa dimensão de né, como foi programar, como é programar, quais são os desafios de programar filmes e fazer a curadoria de filmes nesse contexto pandêmico. So then, in order to address what is proposed by this particular webinar, I would like to talk about the experience of programming and curatorship for uh, an online version of the festival that we had last year. Então, foi a, primeira, foi a primeira vez em 13 anos que a gente fez uma edição online. O encontro ele tem a duração de 10 dias e a gente manteve essa proposta. É, e, man, e decidiu manter também a mesma estrutura do que a estrutura presencial. É, e tinha, né, a, a uma direção artística, que é a diretora artística é a Viviane Ferreira, que é também cineasta, e havia a proposta, digamos assim, a provocação da Viviane, né, de como a curadoria podia replicar o, as, virtualmente a experiência de acolhimento, o que a gente chamou de experiência do abraço, porque é uma coisa que a gente faz muito aqui no Brasil, a gente se abraça, e o encontro é esse lugar onde as pessoas se abraçam porque se encontram, fisicamente, estão felizes. Então, como a curadoria podia dialogar com esse elemento tão afetivo e tão forte na história do encontro, que é essa ideia de que você abraça, abraça os filmes, mas abraça também é, as pessoas, enfim, com essa dimensão desse acolhimento. Como a curadoria podia refletir isso? Então, so, em summary, uh, the festival has been taking place for 13 years and last year it was the first time that we had an online edition and Viviana Ferreira who was the artistic director for the festival she engaged with the, the challenge of thinking about curatorship as an act of embracing that uh, was very much is very much a part, much a part of the essence of this festival in which not only do we embrace the film but we also embrace each other as we gather up together in this in, in this physical spaces so the challenge was how to replicate uh, this 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 notion of the embrace this feeling of the embrace uh, in curatorship in an online version of the black film Zozimobu Black Film Festival Bom, e aí a gente pensando, eu vou talvez encerrar aqui para a gente né, é, poder conversar, é, algumas questões, né, por exemplo, algumas decisões é, técnicas, né, por exemplo, de manter a janela do horário naquele horário, quer dizer, como no, nos festivais, né, se você vai, a sessão é às duas, ela acontece às duas e ela não, o filme não vai ficar 24 horas online, isso para que as pessoas pudessem experienciar a proposta da curadoria, então as sessões tinham horários fixos e era só naquele horário, não ficava por é, muito mais tempo além disso. A gente também buscou promover conversas é, que foram pré-gravadas com os cineastas. E, a, por fim, a gente teve conversas online, né? todas as dimensões, por exemplo, políticas do olhar, foram, ao invés de ser tipo um seminário, porque era isso, presencial, foi uma sessão diária de uma hora com cada curador que vocês viram é, naquele slide anterior. So, um, one of the decisions that we had to make were, was related to technical issues. And um, the, the decision was that we would have a fixed 
schedule to exhibit the movie, maintaining the, the schedule in the traditional format of the uh, non-virtual or presential meeting. And in that sense, therefore, we extended this notion of being uh, all together at the same time, participating at a particular event. Uh, this was one of the technical decisions that we had to make. And the second one was to maintain the format of uh, promoting conversation and dialogue. And we did that in a two-fold approach. Uh, conversations and debates uh, with curators and black filmmakers that were pre-recorded in a second approach in which we had sessions, one hour sessions with curators and black filmmakers that were presential in which we could engage with the public through Q&A. Então, é, foi um grande desafio realizar, a gente passou 120 filmes, 70 filmes nacionais, 50 filmes internacionais, 63 curtas nacionais, 7 longas nacionais, 39 curtas e médias internacionais e 11 longas internacionais, quase todos com conversas com os cineastas presentes. Well, then, it was a huge challenge that we were able to meet in which we exhibited uh, 120 films, 70 national films and 50 international ones, and um, uh, 63 feature films were seven. And we also maintained uh, this dialogue with Black filmmakers through these online debates and webinars. Então, esses são os números finais. Então, a gente teve 120 filmes, 8.123 pessoas assistiram os filmes integralmente. É, foram, de um modo geral, né, 22.293 visualizações e 186.871 minutos. Esses são os números. É, e o que, pensando essa dinâmica do que, que mostra para a gente sobre programar filmes nesse tempo de pandemia, nesse deslocamento, né, desse desafio, essa mudança de, de formato? E aí eu vou concluir, Raquel. Então, então, The final outcome was 120 films, 8,023 people watched the film in it, uh, com the completely, 22,029,3 visualization of films, and 186,000 plus minutes that were watched. E isso foi só na plataforma de exibição, né? sem contar as transmissões ao vivo uh, uh, no Facebook, Instagram, né? as outras formas de acessar as conversas, sobretudo. Né? Isso é a plataforma só dos filmes, esses são os números é, dos, dos filmes. É, e o que está so, colocando... Uh, so the numbers related to, uh, calculated based on the main platform in which the films were exhibited, but we also had activities that were being developed through several different pages on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. E ainda que... Uh, ai, meu Deus. Está me vendo, Raquel? Okay. Yes, I, I can see you. <laughs> Aconteceu alguma coisa aqui, eu apertei alguma coisa errada. Bom, e ainda que seja, fosse muito desafiador fazer isso, e é muito diferente da experiência presencial, o que a gente percebe é que, do ponto de vista é, do acesso e da possibilidade, né, uma série de pessoas é, do Brasil e fora do Brasil que não, nunca puderam experienciar o encontro, é, tiveram acesso não só aos filmes e às conversas é, e, as, e os cursos... É, é, e isso, na verdade, é algo que a gente, talvez, nesse um aprendizado, que a dinâmica presencial e virtual não são opostas e que há possibilidade de explorar é, não só a exibição dos filmes, mas, enfim, viver essa outra experiência que é ver filmes fora da sala de cinema. Quer dizer, o que eu acho que eu estou querendo dizer é que é, é muito difícil, no primeiro momento, acomodar essa diferença entre estar numa sala, estar com as pessoas, sair da sessão, conversar com as pessoas, 
ou não, né? É, dessa experiência solitária, mas que é possível a gente criar estratégias, né? É, enfim, de coletividade, da experiência coletiva mesmo online. So, for me, what I would like to emphasize here is that we shouldn't perceive uh, presential uh, festivals and virtual festivals as, as though they are in diag diagonally opposed to one another, and that we, there are creative ways of, of meeting this challenge of programming film festivals in such a way that it, they might not fully address the experience of being inside the film the theater and leaving the theater and exchanging experiences and, and dialogue presentially with one another. But there are creative ways of addressing this gap. And uh, the experience of the Zosmobobo Festival last year is a proof of that. E que, bom, mesmo que esse ano a gente faça um evento presencial, ele vai ser também um formato híbrido, a gente já decidiu isso, que a gente vai de algum modo, mesmo que a pandemia acabe, o que eu acho que não vai acabar, infelizmente, é, a gente vai também seguir nesse diálogo online. Então, acho que mais um deslocamento epistemológico está aí posto para a gente, enquanto programadores, espectadores e amantes de cinema, que é lidar com essa... Isso sim, eu não gosto dessa coisa de novo normal, acho isso uma... Enfim, mas é, eu acho que há uma nova forma que já vinha acontecendo. Quem tem, trabalha com jovens sabe que as, os jovens assistem filmes de outra maneira, que não é essa forma da sala de cinema. Então, acho que tem uma coisa posta, uma possibilidade, e que talvez, assim, é, que, é, que esses formatos é, online, que as exibições online colocam. Eu não estou abrindo mão da experiência virtual e nem estou dizendo que é melhor. Eu só estou dizendo que é outra coisa. E é isso, gente. Obrigada. Vou ficar aqui. Pra gente so, uh, what I would like to to emphasize then is that uh, we have decided that next year we are going to have the festival just in, just in case the pandemics are over and we are actually able to have. Um, the traditional format of a film festival in which we are uh, present at a film theater, we are going to have a hybrid format in which we are also going to have a virtual exhibits and debates. And this is what I mean when I talk about uh, this concept of an epistemological dislodging, because when we think about uh, an online format, This is the preferred way for youth to attend, to watch films. People who work with young people, they know that they do not necessarily attend theaters in order to experience a uh, film. And um, so this is how I would like to conclude my lecture. And I would like to once again, thank you for inviting me to participate in this webinar. And uh, one more thing that I forgot, just so let's see. Last thing, last. Uh, o flyer é o seminário em Nova York que vai não vai ser era para ser em junho do ano passado foi adiado vai ser em julho desse ano e o flyer também é, a gente esse é o tema da minha proposta curatorial o Facis e o flyer também vai acontecer nesse formato híbrido Quer dizer, esse, na verdade, para o ano que a gente está vivendo agora, 2021, os formatos híbridos são é, é o melhor dos casos e esse grande desafio para saber como a gente vai lidar né, com essa experiência. Há uma possibilidade de acesso, mas, obviamente, que é, há um outro lado que uh, enfim, precisa se transformar, que é desse de como a gente se relaciona não só com as projeções, mas com as conversas que acontecem né, em virtude delas. É isso. Obrigada. So, opacity is, is the, 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 the flyer to festival, film festival. The seminar that was supposed to happen last year was postponed, and it's going to take place in June. And it's also going to be organized around uh, the same format of a hybrid format in which you're going to have virtual uh, exhibits and debates in presential activities as well, which seems to be the best format to address 
uh, the, the new circumstances in which we live. I don't necessarily uh, like very much this whole concept of a new normal. I think it's nonsense. But, um, you know, I believe that we are finding new ways to address the challenges posed. There are a lie ahead of us in this year. So this hybrid format seems to be the best solution, the best way uh, to address uh, the challenges posed in the context of programming films and curatorship. Thank you. Obrigada, Rachel. Sempre as ordens. Okay, thank, thank you very much indeed, um, Janay. Now that, that's very stimulating um, information that you've shared with us there and, it's, and plenty for us to think about. And thanks again to Hakel uh, for her interpreting. It's always a challenge to interpret for someone who's got very good, who's got very <laughs> good English. You know, Absolutely. I don't envy you, I don't envy you uh, Absolutely. at all, but you did, a, you, did a, you did a super oh. job. So thank you very much indeed. Um, I'd like to pass over to um, Gilberto Sobrinho now. Um, Gilberto, uh, would you prefer to, to would you prefer to speak in English? Do you want to carry on the conversation in English, or are you happy enough doing that? You perhaps got some comments that you would like to make or reflections. Boa tarde. Eu poderia seguir como a Janaína. Eu vou falar pouco, falar português uh, para a gente não romper. O que você acha? Okay, we've got. We, a, Raquel, yeah, we, a Raquel tem alguns minutos ainda, Raquel. We've got a few minutes. Yes, Raquel. for sure, absolutely. Yes, very much. Brilliant, thank you. Much. Brilliant, thank you. Thank you. And also, Bom. if you feel like I can, eu posso depois comentar em inglês. Enfim, vocês decidem. Me fale. Okay. Few more minutes then. Yeah, okay. Bom, então boa tarde oficialmente. Muito obrigado por me chamar para fazer essa mediação. É um prazer sempre é, ter esse diálogo com a Janaína. Uh, a gente tem uma, uma parceria na Socine, que é o, o principal congresso de cinema do Brasil, e nós temos um, um seminário temático lá de cinema negro. I'm sorry to interrupt you, desculpe interromper. But first of all, good afternoon, I would like to thank you for the invitation I have. I'm just going to share a few thoughts. Uh, with you. Um, first of all, um, Janaina and I have a partnership. Uh, we work at this uh, festival called Socini. And uh, in light of, of this partnership, desculpe interromper, pode continuar. Ok. Bem, é, é importante, é, talvez eu fale coisas aqui que sejam um pouco mais óbvias. Como a Janaína está nessa, nessa posição de, de curadoria do maior festival de cinema negro, uh, um dos maiores, um dos maiores festivais do Brasil. So then, I might just say a few things that might seem obvious, uh, since we are talking about Janaína Oliveira, who is in charge of the curatorship of the largest and most prominent black film festival in Brazil. Então, aqui eu vou fazer um pouco o papel de professor na medida em que o que a Janaína faz também é objeto do meu, de meu, dos meus estudos. E, e esse trabalho que ela desenvolve junto com a equipe dos Osimo Bobô, eu, tento, eu levo para a sala de aula. Então, eu vou trazer o perspectiva do professor, porque o trabalho que é desenvolvido por Janaína é o foco do meu trabalho and I take uh, the work that is developed in the context of the Zodemogobo Black Film Festival to my classroom settings as a space for debate with my students. É, eu frequento o Festival Zodemogobo como espectador, como pesquisador e como realizador. E agora, recentemente, também eu tomo lições de curadoria, que recentemente eu passei a exercer isso no Festival de Vitória com longa-metragem. So, I participate in the festival as part of the audience, as a professor and a researcher, and now I have been also receiving a training within the context of the festival, and the, through the workshops that are developed to train uh, curators 
So I'm also uh, acquiring a training as in curatorship through the festival. Então, uma, um aspecto importante que 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 está na fala da da Janaína que eu gostaria de de realçar. So an important aspect of the Janaina piece that I would like to emphasize é que a gente tem hoje o uh, um, um, um cinema negro entendido como um grande movimento cultural no Brasil em diálogo com as diásporas e com a África. Is that uh, we understand black film uh, as something that is being developed in the context of Brazil and establishing a dialogue with other black film productions that are being developed in other parts of the diaspora. E ao mesmo tempo, esse movimento cultural amplo, com festivais em várias outras capitais, com mostras, várias publicações, ele também tem sido assimilado e constitui um campo de estudo acadêmico já com sua tradição própria. And the Black Film Festival therefore is perceived or conceptualized as a cultural movement that reverberates in other parts of the country in which black film exhibits also take place in different capitals. And, uh, please keep going. Então, o Festival Zose Mobu, Mobu né, ele tem desempenhado esse papel é, na vanguarda, portanto, né, do pensamento das, das, das práticas da, 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 do encontro de realizadores e agora promovendo de maneira muito profunda a curadoria como prática de pesquisa e de pensamento. And not only has it then been developed and becoming a space uh, for black filmmakers and curators, but also a space in which. Desculpe, repita a última parte que você falou, por favor, que tem um. A curadoria, uh, os Osimo Bubu proporciona pensar curadoria profundamente como uma prática de pesquisa. So, the Osimo Zosim... Bubu Festival has also uh, developed or, or, or launched or fostered the possibility of thinking about curatorship more profoundly as a topic for research investigation. Eu, eu tenho o privilégio não só de é, poder compartilhar é, parte do que é gestado no festival com os meus estudantes. So not only do I share uh, what has been uh, the exhibits, the work that is developed within the context of the festival with my students. Mas também... É, ao assumir a curadoria de longa-metragem do Festival de Vitória, junto com outra companheira, a jornalista Leila. So, uh, then I take over the role of, of being the curator of a film festival that takes place in Vitória, along with uh, a partner, uh, Leila. Leila Bodocan. Uh... Leila nós, nós sentimos que nós demos um salto em relação à proposta curatorial do festival, à medida em que questões da negritude e também em associação com questões LGBT, das, das mulheres, das periferias, passaram a ser incorporadas. E então, isso tem muito a ver... Like... Desculpa. Eu aqui me peço desculpa. Nós sentimos que nós temos avançado em termos de... Uh, thinking of curatorship as we incorporate black film, not only black films, but we also incorporate productions uh, that are geared towards the LGBTQI plus population. Então, uh, porque é, isso tem muito a ver com a maneira como o cinema negro tem sido gestado e pensado no Brasil. É um lugar da pluralidade, das formas e do pensamento. Portanto, a gente passa a ver o cinema de uma outra forma. And therefore, it has to do with how black film has been conceptualized in Brazil as a space for plurality 
And uh, that's the way we have been engaging with the curatorship of our film festival. Bom, eu vou encerrar aqui é, agradecendo novamente. Quis apenas fazer uma síntese para vocês, compartilhar com vocês um pouco do impacto do, do trabalho que é feito pelo festival, pela Janaína, agora pela Ana Paula, que é uma pessoa que eu admiro bastante. Já tinha o Joel Zito, que é uma pessoa referência. Então, para a gente pensar assim, a, o, o impacto que esse festival tem no movimento cultural do Brasil, e no, e no campo acadêmico. So then, uh, I would like to conclude my remarks by emphasizing the impact of the Zosimobo Bull Black Film Festival in terms of uh, the processes of curatorship. Uh, uh, not only do we currently have Janaína Oliveira as a curator, but we also have Ana Paula, and before that we had José Araújo, all these people whose work I admire tremendously. And I would like to emphasize the impact uh, that the, this festival has had and the cultural movement more broadly in the country. E a só mais uma coisinha, com a, a pandemia e, e o formato virtual, agora a gente pode ter o festival dentro da sala de aula, o que significou um, uma transformação radical em termos de experiência de ensino aprendizagem com o cinema. And uh, in light of the pandemic and the fact that the format had to be adjusted to a virtual format, it has brought to us the advantage of incorporating uh, the Black Film, Zosimo Bubu Black Film Festival activities as part of classroom setting activities. And this has brought to us uh, incredible uh, pedagogical um, advantages. Thank you very much. Obrigado, Raquel. <laughs> Thank you, uh, thank you, Gilberto, and, and thanks once again to Raquel for her interpreting. I think we'll we'll move on now and then and um, open this up for um, discussion. And we do have a couple of questions that have come in. So um, over to English then, um, Janaina. Uh, so the first the first question that's come in is uh, how would you define cinema negro? Um, this is a, uh, the question is in Portuguese. So presumably there, there are lots of different ways, things that might be considered to be included or, or otherwise. Uh, it's an interesting question, isn't it? How would you, how would you personally answer that? Yeah, <laughs> this is a question that says, uh, oh, thank you, Raquel, so much for your work and sorry for interrupting you from time to time. You didn't know me, <laughs> you know how it works. <laughs> we work together several times, you know how this, this goes. And to Beth, thank you so much for your kind comments and words. And, and it's also, you know, it's also great to, to hear and feel the feedbacks and possibilities that, you know, doing the Encontro is a festival, does Mobile Black Film Festival has you know, in people, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, this uh, question about what is black film? You know, that's, that's pretty much a, a central question in my life because when I first started, you know, I was known in the festival and other places to be the person asking this question, but also I was known about the, and being the person that I was not into answering it <laughs> in the sense that uh, pretty much uh, everything that I've been saying when I'm talking about um, epistemological displacement has to do with, you know, somehow not being interested in the um, Eurocentric patterns of ways of thinking when you have to say what it is in order to understand it or to live with it. So I think when we talk about Black cinema in general, of course, there's a historical path that we can follow up that starts in the, you know, the US and has to do with counter representations with, you know, not being satisfied with everything that we see on screen, how black people is portrayed and represented, of course, has to do with that. So you can kind of trace offline. There's a huge discussion that you can say that black film is about uh, have a black authorship so a black director. It's about have black characters in the scene. It's about black having uh, films directed to black audience. So you can set those kinds of ideas that are around the, the, 
the history and the, the concept of black films. But I think also it's interesting to say that if you go through this history, you're never going to find a single moment that is a kind of, you know, uh, one definition or everybody agreeing with that definition. What brings it to us that um, it's more about a problem, a relationship with uh, films and audience and representation or non-representation and then uh, a concept. And it's a political standpoint that we can never forget. You know, when you're filming black films, it's not about chasing an ideal concept of what it is to be black, because this is an, um, a, an answer, a question that we cannot find a single answer, you know, only an answer for it. So um, what I'm trying to say is that I think it's an important question, but the what's relevant is the question more than the answer. Mm -hmm. There's a black, uh, there's a scholar, a US scholar that I, that's very important to my work. Someone who's also, I have an honor to be a close friend. That's Michael Gillespie. He has this book. It's called, it's a 2016 film book, Film Blackness. And, uh, and I, I, what I like about uh, Michael's book for me, it's something because I was, already know that person known for asking but not giving answers and then when I, I, I Michael published this book in 2016 but I, it came to me a, a year and a half maybe later 2017 so when I was in when I was at Howard for as a Fulbright scholar that where I came to know this work and um, and you know he has a, a, a very serious statement about you know how black film is always a question never an answer because that's 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 in this whole history of black films you have this um i would say issue this this tension of relating black experience in cinema with something that we think is reality of black people's lives so it's that's this kind of equivalence uh, this is a black this is a word in english I'm making up, that's, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so there's kind of, you know, so what do you see when you talk about black films represents, you know, the true of black lives, whatever it is. But there's a question behind there that, that what are black lives and what is to be black? To be black is to be everything that you want to. So at the same time, if you answer the question, you also frame it in a way that you, you create a series of expectations about what it's going to see on the screen. So what being very uh, practical when something, when you start to, when you watch something that's not correspondent to this idea that you have in your mind about what is being black, you, in a way, you, you're not going to consider it a black film. You get what I'm trying to say, what, this idea about, uh, but also this protocol, this way of understanding has to do with our Eurocentric background with this idea of transparency. So it has to be clear. I have to be able to uh, understand it and say what it is in order to connect to it. So for example, when I bring the idea, Edward Blisson's idea of opacity and when he claims because he has this uh, small uh, piece called uh, for opacity when he says that he's claiming the right of opacity has to do with breaking this uh, way of relating because what it, in, it related to life but also related to films in our case here that in the sense that you know if you don't understand it that's okay but you have to find other ways of relating to it and not necessarily by defining so I think this is also a thing that's pretty much in the core of my reflections as a scholar, but also as a programmer. Uh, I don't know if I answer, but anyway, being more sharp in my question, there's, I published recently a, a piece on Film Quarterly. There's a, this uh, dossier on Brazilian cinema that just came out and we, we're gonna have a webinar next Friday also at 3 p.m. on New York time 
So, and the text is available, so um, I can paste it here. And all the, the, the whole dossier is available, it's, it's open. So you can, you know, not only read my text, but also there's, for example, something that Zuberto brought in his comments about the film festivals, black film festivals in Brazil. There's a piece from Kenya Freitas, there's also a film critic and scholar, very important in the, uh, the, the field of thinking about black films uh, here in Brazil. So yeah, you can read and we can keep on talking maybe Friday if you feel like. Brilliant, thank you very much. Um, we've got quite a few questions coming in, so <laughs> uh, apologies to people if I don't actually get through them all. Um, we've got one from my co-convener of the seminar here, um, Thea Pittman, would like to know, um, you know, it's great that you got um, a good audience for the festival when it went online, but did you spot any differences in the type of people who were attending um, in comparison with years when the event was held in person? Um, yeah, uh, of course that uh, we had this huge uh, uh, audience of, you know, black, black folks coming from other states that were never able to attend because also there's a kind of um, financial issue to travel to Rio to be here for 10 days. It's not easy, but also what I, because I, I got many feedback from different, you know, uh, different areas, the people from what I saw that was quite interesting in that sense that usually people that never acknowledge the, the relevance of what we're doing were watching the films and they were surprised, <laughs> kind of, oh, kind of, oh, this is serious. Oh, this is nice. Oh, this, how come you're in the big, we are living this huge crisis and you have those names present, you know, kind of, you know, they were, the people that really underestimate what we are doing because they consider when you talk about black film kind of less cinema, another very Eurocentric perspective. And they, you know, they were surprised by what they saw kind of, oh, so this is cinema. So this is also a lot of, of course, I got nice feedbacks too, but I'm, I'm, I see that people that were not into what we are doing because they have this kind of vision without never attending, but this very, you know, bad stereotyped vision. And also it was interesting to see how they were breaking their own, uh, you know, stuck ideas about what we're doing. So, and to see people that, you know, and, and of course people, random people that you never, you know, got a chance to understand African films and what, what you're doing, Sudanese cinema, oh, this guy, oh, he's on uh, Netflix now, but what he's doing, how come, you know, and this thing about having conversation with the filmmakers was also um, nice. The Brazilians and of course the international ones. Thanks. Um, I mean, there's there's a question here that mentions Bolsonaro, so I'm going to go straight to this because this is something that which I think a lot of people are probably curious to hear more about. So um, you've talked about um, the act of abrazo, you know, so this embrace, intervention, care, zelo, etc. So how do you, how can that happen under a Bolsonaro government, um, which does not care about people, culture, promoting equality, education, etc. Um, and then the follow up question is, um, how are filmmakers coping uh, with cut to uh, uh, budgets for culture, cinema, etc. So it's kind of like it's the it's the stuff that's been exacerbated by the pandemic, really, isn't it? Because this is something we've discussed in uh, uh, one of our previous events was, you know, this exacerbation of situations that already existed before the pandemic and how it's made it worse. Oh no, bad people, you know, they are part of the world. And he's just a guy occupying this place and created, of course, very serious damages, but, we have to keep on going, you know, no matter what, because if we stop every time he goes online and say something, every time he cut a phone, every time, you know, we, we are going to be, I, I have a lot of friends that are sick. I'm not talking about, you know, they don't have uh, COVID. They are just like depressed 
because this is all about this is also doing to undermine our hopes our dreams our every day so we get stuck of course it passed through because it has to do i'm talking about you know the energy and the vibe so we keep on doing things as much and as better as ever we did before for example this um the i'm going to be attached to the encounter experience so for the last three years we have every year is bigger and every year one we have more people wanting wanting to come you know so last into the last edition, the first edition that we made the uh, gays politics, when you have uh, invited 12 uh, creators from different three, three were Brazilians, but the other nine, they came elsewhere. And, you know, they invited themselves to come. They wanted to be here in this conversation. Of course, you know, there's a kind of network going on that I'm happy to be part of it, you know, and to work this network. What I'm trying to say is that even though we have this very uh, sad situation, because what he's doing now is going to affect, you know, the next two generations in terms of, you know, cutting phones about the public um, university, about, you know, pub the, the cinema, you know, as you as people might know, making films here has to do with uh, public money. We have this national agency of cinema that's completely, you know, being broken piece by piece as each part of the politics of uh, culture. But at the same time, we are here and we're doing things and, you know, people are working in ways of, you know, keep on going. So I think this idea of this uh, gesture of intervention has to do with this reality too, because at the same time we are living this for the first time, people that never expected to watch those films or to listen or to participate or to engage in those conversations, they got opportunity to it. So I'm not saying I'm not this kind of person, oh, people need a pandemic to see, I hate this you know, speech and this posture, this gesture, I, this is not the thing. I didn't need, need this to be the person I am. And I don't believe, you know, anybody needed that. But at the same time, we're here. And what is, what, what do we have? What are the possibilities? What we're doing? And I think, you know, he's going to keep on doing, you know, what he's doing. It has a name. It's called genocide. That's what he's doing. And uh, we have to find ways of fighting this. And I believe resisting and doing our, you know, using our capabilities, our, our capacities to do things as best, as better we can, as, as has to do with resisting for me, particularly. So I think the, the encounter, the Black Film Festival does also reflects this. And I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about the work that Viviane Ferreira is doing, Biza Ferreira, that's Zosie Musuido, and also the um, executive producer, Ana Paula Alves Ribeiro, that was my colleague in the program. It's now the whole team working together because to do a thing online, this is another challenge that we didn't, you know, spoke about, that I work like twice harder than doing it uh, presentially. It's no less work, it's much more work. We start working a month and a half ago. We, ha we had the feeling that we, we, we lived two festivals, not on one, because as we pre-recorded all the sessions with the filmmakers, you can imagine, it was like <laughs> 36, 36? I don't know, Raquel, help me, 36 uh, uh, programs. So each program a conversation. So we. <laughs> so it, it, was, it was very challenging marathon. Let me tell you. So, but you know we made it work, and people were very pleased, were very happy, and they felt hugged. That's also something. So, yeah, I don't know if I answered. But, yeah, you know. no, you did. Yeah, definitely. And, and you highlighted, I think, a couple of things. Well, generally, in your in your talk today, you've highlighted 
you know, obviously how important the Zozo Bull 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 um, Film Festival is um, uh, for, you know, sort of like the uh, dissemination of information and sharing of information on, you know, sort of black culture, broadly speaking. Uh, and it's, you know, it very much fits in with what we're trying to do as part of our series is just think beyond, you know, a, a really obvious, supposedly central um, Anglo centric space that dictates how things work. Well, there's an awful lot that's actually happening and, and challenging and, and actually dictating um, how we understand certain things that's actually happening in Brazil, not happening in New York, not happening in Rotterdam, not happening in Leeds. You know, it's, ha it's happening, you know, elsewhere. So it's, it's a really encouraging to hear you speak about it so positively. And the second thing that you're revealing is that, you know, there's so much hidden work that goes on, whether it's curating or, you know, promoting, uh, you know, lecturers, university staff do it too. But, you know, we are paid a salary to teach, but we, you know, we curate in a very informal way when we choose what to teach, uh, you know, and there's all sorts of sort of hidden kind of, uh, you know, sort of informal work that goes on that isn't necessarily paid paid for but to run a festival you need money you need funding from somewhere and there's so many avenues that are that are you know shrinking and disappearing presumably in brazil so i guess that must still be a massive challenge for you for the festival yes, yes. but you know also that's also has to do with the history the unfortunate history of black people or non-white people non-male white cisgender men <laughs> doing things that in Brazilian cinema, that you know, access to funding, it was, it is historically, you know, here. <laughs> so it's not that, I mean, of course, that things are worse than ever now. But what I'm saying that you know, uh, when you look, uh, even on CINI, the National Agents of Cinema, only in 2016, it started, you know, to be more flexible in terms of the criteria of alleging of this. I'm talking about, we are like 2021 now, I'm talking about 2016. So historically, you know, making films in Brazil is also to, has, to, has, has to do with this, up with our reality, with our, you know, sad and depressing, excluded reality, racist, you know, sexist, that who's making those, the first black film, feature um, film, narrative piece, this made by a black woman was 1984. It's Adela Sampaio, Amor Maldito. So cut. The second one was uh, Jerusa's, uh, Viviane Ferreira Jerusa's in 2019. Of course, we have documentary, I'm talking about feature narrative films, what cinema considers to be cinema in the sense of the industry of so the second one is this so we have this 43 years gap you know so this is but at the same time you have this young generation making making short films you know making amazing films and now we have other uh, feature films narrative ones going on films that are circulating you know but everything is very recent this movement that Zubert brought in his uh comment has it's the, the the possibility of talking about black cinema in brazil as a movement not only as a, a, a initiative of one director or a group or one film festival it's something 2010 you know on it's very recent 2015 maybe so and what i'm saying you know when it comes to to, to the money for the productions people are looking for the uh, what I see, this is also interesting. I was uh, 2019 before COVID, and I was in this um, market festival. It's strictly uh, directed to market, and I was in this panel, and people were talking about it was was another first year, and people were like, "Oh, this is a, this is a, this big crisis. What we have to do? We have to fight." And uh, I, I believe everybody here saw Bacurau and there was this Bacurau ambience and, and there was kind of a claim for, you know, almost going to war in a fight against, you know, what's going on in Brazilian funds. And then I just, okay, let's stop for a while. You know, I would love to, but Bacurau is not here. 
we are not on the same page when you talk about crisis and you talk about home because historically this place where you go chase the money never attend other people <laughs> than the same group so what we are talking about what cinema we're going to fight for it's the first question because the cinema that before 2016 because the cinema has this period of being flexible it was two years when Bolsonaro arrived, it cut it off. Even the affirmative actions in, um, in films that Jerusa, for example, Vivian Ferreira films, is uh, how it, it, it became possible to exist, you know, existed only one time. It was so. Um, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, even though we have this. Um, this crisis going on, what I what I listen from white producers, for example, they are paying attention how uh, non-white people are making films to understand how to do films without money. <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of, okay. Oh, now you understand that that's, so I don't know, you know, uh, I think that I'm, I'm not defending that we have to live this way. I'm just saying that we have to live anyhow. Oh, it's really interesting. Um, Sadly, I'm afraid we've run out of time. So apologies again to those who didn't get their questions asked. Um, thank you very much indeed, Janine. You've given us loads of food for thought. Um, it's been really stimulating. Thank you to, to Gilberto and to Raquel. And can I also say a very special thanks to Alice Miller for um, setting this all up and organizing this. And I'm really hoping that Alice is going to have the date for our next um, webinar to hand so, so that she can remind me <laughs> so I can tell everyone when it is i believe it's is it i think it's the 11th of february but, 11th um, of february sounds right to me 11th of february yeah, um, yeah uh, we, we've got our, our next webinar which will be with sandra benicis and we'll be talking about indigenous art curation in brazil uh, so continuing hopefully some of these really interesting and stimulating um conversations we've been having here um so yeah thank you very much again and hope to see you all very soon Thank you, thank you. Thank and you. please, if you feel like, you know, I, I got my, I left my email on the first slide so you can communicate. And oh, also, brilliant. Uh, Flyerty will be online also. So it's another, you know, opportunity. And there's another, other film festivals that I'm programming this year here in Brazil. And they are going to be online too. So, brilliant. Okay. Thank okay. you so Cheers. much. Obrigada. Obrigada, Raquel, Gilberto, todo mundo. Cheers. Thank you. Obrigado. Beijão. Um abração. Até mais. Bye.